in this learning we will continue our discussion on missing variable analysis so here i have taken two variables sales variable and profit variable both are numeric variables and both have a measure of scale so i have intentionally taken a small data so that we can understand the differences between various types of missing value analysis here sales data is missing in the fourth case and profit data is missing in the fifth case and let us now maybe do one more thing that here we can here we can now start processing this information right let us go to analyze missing value analysis and i can now select both the variables and here there are few options we are basically computing descriptives we are computing univariate statistics like mean standard deviation etc and we we have the options here four of them we in this uh, learning first of all we'll explore these options first is list wise option and let us click ok and here some output is produced we will talk about this output in a minute this is output that we get suppose we will study only the means just to make a better understanding so list wise means is 466.66 and uh, all values mean is 450 then for the time being i will not save it then we go to analyze again and here again we use the missing value analysis and from the previous uh, selection spss has remembered our variables which is fine and this time we will use pairwise estimation and this time we got these numbers pairwise now let us uh, talk about what is happening behind the scenes so we can compare the means output in both cases when we do the list wise analysis which is shown shown on the left here and pairwise analysis which is shown on the right here now let us understand how we got these numbers for example we have a mean of all values which is 450 and uh, list wise it is 466.66 so how we got it actually our numbers in sales variable are 200 300 400 and 900 so if we go here 200 300 400 and 900 so these four scores were available or values were available but one value was missing so if we total all these then this comes out to be uh, 1800 divided by 4 which gives us 450 so this is the value that we get here 450 this is mean of all the numbers but how come we got 466.67 which is here also and which is here also which is here also so this is list wise and list wise is if we go back to these values now we have 200 and there is 40 also 360 also for 400 variable second value is not available for this variable for which profit is 120 sales is not available so these two will be missed these two will be skipped when we are doing list wise calculations so we will take 200 300 and 900 
So we go to the whiteboard again 200, 300 and 900. So this is list wise and of course it would be this time divided by 3. So this time we have 1400 divided by 3 which gives us 466.666 or we can say 67. So this way we have difference between all values and list values mean of those and when we take option pairwise rather than list wise then pairwise the matrix is represented li little differently so it is represented with pairwise combination of the variables right here there is no pairwise combination so table is made little differently so it just means the mean of sales when sales values are available which are four it means mean of sales when profit values are available which are three similarly this is mean of profit when sales value is available which is three actually and this is mean of profit when profit values are available so if we wonder how we got 80 80 we got this way right 80 we got this way profit when profit is available profit when sales is available for example 40 60 and 140 will be used 40 60 and 40 60 and 40 60 and 180 will be used when we are doing this calculation profit when sales are available so this is profit when sales are available in three cases and here we can do the average so to do the average we have to divide it by three of course and here we come out with number sorry this value was 140 so this is 240 and divided by 3 this is right. so this is pairwise this is pairwise comparison now let us talk about other options as well so we go to analyze we go to missing value analysis and we pick up this time regression and click OK so in this case what SPSS is doing it is trying it has calculated the missing values by using the regression analysis so it has calculated the missing values as for 400 for sales and 84 for profit by using regression analysis and then these values are substituted and then the 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 uh, means are calculated so this is regression mean 40 appearing here 400 appearing here and profit is 84 which appears here so this is the mean based on regression analysis right so this is mean of all the values so this way we we can understand that this option does what it calculates the mean by using the regression analysis and regression analysis computes the missing value and then computes the mean of the sales and profit figures when we have one more option i can close this one here and one more option to analyze is which one you got it right em and let us click it and in this case we have something different we have a little note also going at the bottom so let us understand it and there are very interesting things 
associated with the EM estimates. EM stands for expectation maximization. So when EM analysis is used, so these values are calculated. The mean value of sales is 510.3699 and mean value of profit is 86.15 something. Now, when a EM analysis is run, then this EM analysis, first of all, makes assumption about the uh, shape of the distribution. And in this analysis, EM has assumed that the data given is actually a normal distribution. So it makes assumption that the given distribution is a normal distribution. Then second interesting thing which EM analysis does for us is that it computes something known as Little's MCAR or test. So it is given by some statist statistician known as Little. So it is called uh, Little MCAR test. So it computes a significance level over there at the bottom. And if this significance value is 0 0.05 or more, then it means that the values which are missing are completely missing at random. MCAR means missing completely at random. So whatever values are missing, since in our case, this significance computation comes out to be 0.656 which is of course more than 0 0.05 therefore we can conclude that the missing values are missing completely at random and they have no such thing as a dependence upon the other variable so if these are missing completely at random then we can conclude that it is safe to delete the cases with missing values. Wow, this is the most important conclusion. The most important conclusion is that when this value of a Little's MCAR test is more than 0 0.05, we can actually go for the list wise deletion of the missing values and then we can delete those values and more uh, ho if these uh, second condition should be i think uh, i would suggest is that if values are less than five percent missing values are less than five percent then and these are completely missing at random then it is a good idea less than 55 less than five percent items are missing So if less than 5% items are missing and MCAR test uh, gives us a value more than 0 0.05, then we can go for list wise deletion of the data. And uh, after deleting the data, we can carry out the full fledged, the detailed statistical analysis. However, if values are more than 5%, say be, maybe 17% values are missing, uh, or uh, this uh, test gives us a value less than 0 0.05, then it is not safe to delete the missing values. Okay, then it is a good idea to go with these numbers which are produced here. So in that case, we will use those descriptive statistics which are produced here. So that is what this whole thing means. Now, the one question that arises is how we will delete missing values. This is something we will learn in the next tutorial. Thank you.